Okay, we're back live. It's John Workington. I'm on my personal page, but we're continuing the Pano boot camp, shooting Panos from a drone. Let's go uh, tilt the thing up here. The camera's facing away from me, and we're looking at the little Westgate Bridge uh, artwork installation, which is a cross-section of what the actual, I guess, reinforced concrete slices that made up the bridge were. So let's get ready to get this drone in the air. First order of business is we've got to get our camera set up. So we're going to go into the camera settings. I had it set to shoot JPEGs and RAWs earlier today, but there's no need to do that. So we're just going to say we choose RAW files only. So that's fine. We're going to we're photos, RAW files. Let's just set our exposure. I have a seeing suspicion. F5.6 is going to be good. That's the sweet spot of this lens. Probably about... Oh, actually, I've got, a, oh, I've got the screen recorder running. Still good. Uh, now, you're only going to be able to see the live feed from the camera. None of the overlays that I'm using... So you don't really know what I'm setting up here, but trust me, I've got the camera at ISO 100, f5.6, and shutter speed of 400. I am looking at a live histogram. That's a pretty good exposure. Once we get the drone into the air, we should be good to go. I might just set the white balance to... Uh, I might set cloudy, just so it's a little bit warmer. doesn't really matter when we're doing this, because, of course, I've got raw files. But... Um, that's all good. So we go through. We're uh, drone's got lots of battery. We're connected to it. Obviously, the camera's live. As you can see, I'm moving the gimbal. We've got one live viewer. That's good. Obviously, if anybody wants to ask any questions, I'm going to see them while I'm flying. But now, here's the point. I am screen recording this so that you will be able to see in the next video that I post, which will have to be at home when I get the data out of the phone, I'll be able to have the screen recording which shows the complete drone user experience. Obviously, the Facebook Live is merely the raw footage from the camera with none of the text overlays. So, I'll try to be as verbal as I can when I describe this, and hopefully the screen recording will also have the same audio. But anyway, so we've got a raw file, everything's all set up, pretty reasonable exposure here. We've got lots of GPS signal, we're ready to go live. What I'm going to do is using software control, I'm going to have the, the drone take off. And then I'm going to use precision landing, or precision, oh, sorry, it's called, it's called precisely record the takeoff point. So I'm going to send it to that. So let's do the takeoff now. Drone's powering up. You can see everything there, and it is now taking off. It's going to go to six meters height, record the home point, and then it's also going to do its best to get a picture of what it's above. So now what I'm going to do is take a little look-see just straight down here by moving that down. And there you see, it's going to try to come back and land at that exact same spot. So that's all good. So now, there's our exposure as we're looking at that little bridge. And the drone is hovering quite well, so that's all good. We are currently at uh, 5.9 meters in altitude. So, what I'm going to do is go up just a little higher here, just get beyond these trees. So now we're up at 7 meters, 8 meters, 9 meters, and so on. You can see the city in the background. Let's go up to about 30 meters. Okay. Now, in my live view while I'm doing it here, we're at 25 meters, 27, 28, there we are, 30 meters. Okay, so now, in my live view, I have grids on. You cannot see the grids, but what we're trying to do is shoot a panorama, obviously. So we can move left and right, or sorry, rotate left and right, as you see I'm doing that here. It looks like I'm probably overexposed a little bit. I'm going to bring my exposure down. So I'm at a shutter speed of a 400th of a second right now. I'm going to go to 500th of a second just to get a little bit better. So there we are. That gives me a little bit more. Maybe even go to 640th. There we go. So obviously I'm in um, shadow right now. And you can see the uh, light is coming towards me across the go-kart track. But that's basically our methods here. So we're just basically hovering at 30, actually 31 meters now. And I'm just rotating the drone counterclockwise here so you can sort of see what I'm seeing. So there's obviously the Westgate Bridge straight in our view. Uh, some of the ponds here at Westgate Park are there. Uh, and as we keep on going, there's the pond that gets the algae blooms uh, a little bit uh, later in the year once it gets really hot. And... There's uh, the port of Melbourne there. It looks like the uh, Norwegian Jewel, which is the cruise ship that's in port. It looks like the smokestack's fired up there, so they might be getting ready to depart shortly. Usually around 7 or 8 p.m. is when they leave, and I think it's about 5 p.m. right now. 
Uh, we can keep turning back here, go kart track, a little bit more light. So, our process for shooting the panoramas is basically rotating left and right and shooting frames. Because I've got the grid lines on my screen, which I know you cannot see, but you'll be able to see in the follow up video, I basically rotate the drone clockwise and I by paying attention to what's on the left side of the screen, I then move that, oh, sorry, to the right side of the screen. I then rotate the drone and move things over to the other side of the screen. So I make sure I have about one third overlap between frames. And of course, to go up and down, I merely tilt the gimbal on the drone here. So I'm tilting up. Now the maximum spot where the gimbal can go is 30 degrees up. So we don't see the complete vertical. We don't, we don't get to see like, you know, straight up. But that's good enough. It gives us a pretty big hole, but it's just blue sky up there anyway. And of course, the camera can view straight down. Now you see it's quite dark underneath me right now, but that's just as it is. Okay, there we go. It's a little bit better. So what we can do now is put the camera level. The sun's coming through a little bit better here, so that's not too bad. I might need to adjust my exposure. I think if we take a look at where the actual sun is, we might be able to do this whole pano in sunlight, which would be better, because it's awfully hard to have a good shot when you've got... Um, half your image in shade. Now the sun should be coming from uh, over to the right side of the bridge there, so that's all right. So maybe these clouds will move. So that looks like there's the sun about the middle of our screen. So if those clouds move away from us a little bit better, we should be able to have a little bit more into the thing, or into the view here. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling here. But nevertheless, uh, if we look straight down, we see that now there is sun on the ground where I am. Uh, with that in mind, I might just change my white balance back to daylight so we're not as uh, freaky looking in the sky there. So we'll go back to sunny for the white balance. There we go. That's not so bad. It doesn't really matter because, of course, it is a raw file. So let's get ready here. So I'm going to start with the go-kart track in the middle of the screen. It's also a bit brighter now. I'm going to take my exposure to an 800th of a second as well. So let's go here to an 800th of a second. And that's a little bit better. So... Now, I'm going to angle my uh, drone up to maximum here. And now I don't have any land in my view here. All I've got is clouds. So I've got to be sort of careful about how I'm going to do this stuff. Um, I don't really have... Uh, I'm not using automation here because, of course, the DJI, the DJI Go 4 app that we use to fly the drone has no panoramic automation. There are tools that can shoot panoramas automated, but I wanted to show you the whole process of doing it manually. So, oh, here, by the way, we should format that card first, too, so I haven't done that yet. Let's get in and format our memory card. So I've still got photos on there from earlier in the day. So let's format the memory card. Here we go. Formatting it. All good. Okay. Should have thought of that earlier. Okay, so let's take our first shot for the top row. So I'm going to press my shutter button here, and you can probably hear it clicking through my microphone. Now I'm going to rotate the drone clockwise and I'm going to move the cloud that I see on the far right side over to the grid line, which is the third. There we go. Now I've moved that over. So I should have about a 33% overlap. Now I'm looking at another cloud. I'll move it over to the grid line here again. Now you can see my propellers are coming into the scene. There we go. Looking at the clouds on the right side, moving them over towards the grid point. Move it back a little bit. Okay. I see the very top of the flag of the bridge. Move that over to the grid line on the third point here. There we go. Now I see a little something on the far side here. I'll move that over to the grid line. Okay, that's good. And then another cloud there. Move that over to the grid line. And one more cloud. Move that over to the grid line. If you're really smart, you could count your frames here. I'll do one more here, and I think we've got that whole row covered. Okay, that's good. Now, I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit so I can see. Yes, I'm a little bit past the go-kart track. So I'm going to go for level for this one. I'll actually just do it completely level by using that little control. So now, let's get the next row. First shot. Again, looking at what was on the right side of the frame and moving that over to the one-third grid line. So we started with the cruise ship at about the middle. You see it's actually moving now, the cruise ship. So, so much for getting over to the port of Melbourne and shooting the cruise ship for its departure today. I won't be able to do that. But we'll, it'll be in this panel. So let's continue on, get this row. 
you can do this rather quickly, a lot quicker than any of the automation tools run, believe it or not. Plus, they all shoot in column priority, which I really detest. I like to shoot in row priority. And there we go. Went a little bit too far. And I'll shoot this extra one here. Okay, so now for my next row, I'm going to take the horizon to the top of my frame, basically. So that's about there. Cruise, I'll start with the cruise ship basically in about the middle here. And now we continue on. Okay, there we go. And again, just always trying to do one third of a grid line overlap. Don't have to worry about the drone being in a bit of motion when you're doing it. We're running at an 800th of a second shutter speed, so that'll stop any motion. And of course, we've not moved the drone in altitude or left and right in three space. So the whole thing is just hanging there in the air, using its GPS and its compass to stay in one position. Okay. See people in the parking lot there on bicycles. Go back a little bit. And there's the cruise ships in about the middle again. So there we go. That's our third row. Now let's tilt down some more here. Put those trees towards the top. Now we can do this a little bit quicker because there's a lot of overlap when you're shooting further down. Okay, it's pretty easy to get a little carried away when you're doing this as well. Always safer to have more frames than fewer frames. No viewers. Okay, I guess nobody found it from Panel Boot Camp over to here. Well, they'll get the recorded version later. Okay. So there we are, that's good. Now we're going to go straight down and get two extra shots looking straight down. So that's straight up, obviously, or, or horizontal. So there we are, straight down. There we go. And rotated 90 degrees. And good enough. So there you go. That is enough to do what we need to do to shoot a pano. So what I'm going to do now is land the drone. So I'm going to hit return to home and the drone should on its own come back and land right in front of me. So there we are, return to home. And I'm looking up and looking at the drone above me. And let's just see, there it is, it's over by the trees there. Probably the vision system is going to see some of these trees as it's coming in here. Hopefully it's going to be happy and land. Well, it's reporting a little bit of an error here as it's trying to land. It might have to do a little bit, uh, it says it's not safe. I might have to just bring this in by hand here. Okay. Go forward just a little bit and come down. There we go. And we're basically right where we started. And the drone has landed. So, there we go. That should end our little uh, exercise here. Let's take one last shot from the ground and we're good to go. So let us stop the broadcast and end Facebook